Let's start with the washing machine story in a scrapyard near Munich. Here, Annika wants to do a crazy, highly explosive experiment together with chemist Jens Walter. Hello, Jens. Morning, cool that you're already here because you're going to help me today to confirm my claim that you can blow up a washing machine with dry ice. Dry ice is nothing other than carbon dioxide cooled down to minus 78 degrees, but doesn't sound very explosive at first, does it? Before we start, I had asked you if we could do a test run first. Is everything prepared? Yep, everything's there. We can start. Great, let's do it. Dry ice doesn't melt, but suddenly changes from solid to gaseous form and expands like lightning. You can fill it right up and there'll be a real bang. It goes even faster when hot water is added. I'd suggest we put the bottle over here. I fill it with water, you close it and then kaboom! Let's go! Let's start with the mini washing machine, so to speak. The very first drop of hot water on the dry ice produces a lot of steam. Now, the lid goes on. And stand back. Wow, that's quite a bang. The reason is, the released gas expands so quickly and over such a large area that the bottle literally explodes. Annika is delighted. That was a really big bang. Now you know why the washing machine is about to blow up in our faces and that bang will be even bigger. If you think so. I'm sure of it. Perhaps not surprising with such flimsy plastic. But is the pressure enough to blow apart a 60 kilo washing machine with a metal drum and housing? Can it work? Annika is sure. And wherever there's a big bang, a fire brigade is needed. I'd say we'll set the whole thing up now. It's not dangerous yet. He looks quite skeptical already. But now it's time to set up. And since we're in a junkyard, Annika and her helpers have to improvise. Water on! The water goes into the barrel. To get the water into the machine, the boys connect a garden pump. It looks complicated, but it's actually quite simple. It pumps the water from the barrel into the machine. For the experiment to work, the water needs to be at least 60 degrees. The only reason why we heat the water like this now is because I'm impatient. The washing machine would heat up the water too, of course. While the water's heating up, there's time for a few final safety precautions. Because if Annika is right, it could get really dangerous in a moment. The water's now been heating up for 20 minutes and has reached 75 degrees Celsius. All that's missing now is the most important thing, the dry ice. I would make it about half full. Yes, I think that would be the best ratio. You still have to add the water. Yeah, if the drum's too full, then we won't get enough water in. And then the water would freeze and nothing will happen. Exactly. Everything is well thought out. So, pump on, machine on. The experiment is ready. But electricity only flows when the washing machine is plugged in. And so that no one gets hurt, it's better to do it from a few metres away. This is our detonator, because when I connect the cables, we have electricity. Water runs into the washing machine and then bang. So, ready, here we go. Plug in and... Let's carry on with the fire eaters. Today, Carlotta wants to prove that you can make popcorn in a very special way, namely by breathing fire. Popcorn time. And here's how. Hot oil and the right kind of corn. You need a certain kind of corn, namely so-called puffed corn. Inside the corn, in these small grains, there is both water and starch. And you need permanent heat. More than one minute at 200 degrees. Oh, there's the first popcorn. In the corn kernel, there's starch and water. Heat turns the water into steam. The steam expands. This creates enormous pressure inside the kernel, which causes the husk to burst open. At this moment, the starch swells outwards, cools down again quickly and forms a kind of solid foam. This foam gives the popcorn its typical shape. But you can also do the whole thing with fire eaters. 
Carlotta sets off to see Denny Dusterhoft, a world champion fire eater. His technique? He spits a gulp of paraffin onto a flaming torch and huge balls of fire are created. Hot enough it may be, but is it constant enough to make popcorn? Well, I'd say you must be the fire breather. Yes. Wow. Hi, I'm Carlotta. Denny, hi. So now we're going to make popcorn together by spitting fire? Yes. For the experiment, Denny mixes puffed corn with oil. He hangs the filled kitchen pot at a height of two meters. This way, he can spit on the bottom of the pot from below. To prevent Denny from spitting fire until he collapses, we've made clear rules. He's allowed to use up one glass of paraffin. When the glass is empty, then we'll have popcorn if all goes well, OK? Right then, let's get started. Fire! Can Denny get the pot as hot as a hot plate can? It has to work. We want to see popcorn flying out of there now. The flames are up to 900 degrees. And they are big, yes. Denny heats the pot every few seconds. Should be enough to make the popcorn pop, right? But first, let's take to the skies. A familiar claim for anyone who has ever flown and drunk alcohol up there. Alcohol works faster at high altitudes. You know this from when you fly. You drink one or two beers and you're already really drunk. But I maintain that the alcohol level always remains the same. It doesn't matter whether I drink on board a plane or on the ground. And that's despite the fact that you're much more likely to get a buzz on the plane. At Lübeck Airport, Felix meets twin sisters Lena and Julia, 20 years old. The same height, the same weight. Perfect for a comparative drinking test. Now, first of all, I have to ask, who is who? I'm Julia. I'm Lena. Hello, Lena. Hello, Julia. You're here today on behalf of science, drinking for science. Are you ready for this? Yes. So, off to the tarmac. And here he is already, our alcohol level and measuring technology expert, Dr. Jürgen Zohiger. He'll be supervising the entire experiment. We want both of them to start the test under the same conditions, and that's why you're with us today, to make sure they haven't had a drink already. We want them both to reach the same blood alcohol level, so we want to know how much they actually have to drink to do that. OK, so let's start with the first test. I've brought two types of device. One measures very precisely, so we'll use that later. Now we'll measure the zero point. Afterwards, we'll be using this device, which measures the alcohol level on the breath so accurately that the result stands up in court. To show that both are sober, a simple quick test is enough. And how much of these drinks does each of them have to consume now? There is a famous formula for calculating this target alcohol concentration. Based on weight and height and gender, he can even calculate when and with how much alcohol which blood alcohol content level is reached. For you, two large beers. Can you do it? We'll manage. Very nice. Both girls move to their drinking positions. Julia drinks in the air, Lena on the ground. It doesn't matter whether we fly in a passenger aircraft or this sports plane as long as the sports plane gets up to 2,500 metres. And that's because the air pressure there is the same as in a long-haul passenger plane. In those aircraft, the air pressure is artificially regulated to this level. We've reached the cruising altitude we wanted. We're now at 2,500 meters. So, fire away. You can have your first drink now. Here we go. The conditions are the same for both twin sisters. They're to have two beers each within an hour. At the age of 20, not the first beer, but for Julia, the first one above the clouds. We made it. How'd you feel? A bit drunk. If Felix is right, this device will show identical readings. It measures so accurately that its results are recognised in court, so cheating is not possible. Now let's see exactly what your BAC per mil level is. 
the moment of truth. First up is Lena, who's been drinking on the ground. Zero point four nine milligrams per liter times two, just over zero point one percent BAC. Oh, okay. The device measures breath alcohol. To determine the BAC level, the value is simply multiplied by two point one. Result: zero point one zero two percent BAC. I wonder if Julia has the same value. But first, back to Annika. She claims to be able to blow up a washing machine with dry ice, just like this bottle. The bottle was totally shredded. That was a really nice bang. And now you can all imagine how the washing machine will burst apart when we fill it up with dry ice. And that's exactly what we do. About four kilos of dry ice go into the machine and ignite, so to speak. As with the plastic bottle, steam forms abruptly and pressure builds up, and then... But before that, back to Carlotta and her fire eater. Denny spits flames every few seconds to make the puffed corn pop, but there are always a few brief pauses in which the pot can cool down. Why do you think it's not working? There's not enough heat. OK, that means we need more consistent heat on it. Any ideas what to do? Yeah, get a few mates. Good idea. And I didn't say how many fire eaters it would work with, did I? It's a good thing Denny has fire eater friends like Jan Dirk and Johannes. What are your tactics for making this work so we can all eat popcorn? Well, we'll try one after the other as fast as we can. And as soon as one stops, the other one starts. OK, you can get ready. I'm going to get out of here so I don't go up in flames too. And again, they spit flames at normal puffed corn. Only this time, there are three of them. Ready? OK, I'll start. OK, I start. And now full power. Three of them try to create a permanent flame under the pot. The pot must not cool down. The corn only pops at a constant 200 degrees. So, come on, let's have some real fire. The boys slowly get things going. Flames heat up the pot almost non-stop. And remember, it has to be heated constantly to 200 degrees. The fire eaters have done it. The husks start to burst and real popcorn pops out. It worked. The musketeers here. Ta-da! The proof. I told you so. I'm not the liar. So, let's take off again. Felix says drinking on a plane or on the ground makes no difference to your blood alcohol level. To check this, two twin sisters went drinking for science, one in the air, the other on the ground. Ground Lena has 0.102% BAC. Now it's Air Julia's turn. So, another deep breath. If Felix is right, she'll have the same value. That's right, nice and calm, breathe out evenly, and at least as far as the first bar. Keep going, keep going. <laughs> Super. 0 0.46 milligrams per litre of breath, equivalent to 0 0.97 parts per thousand, less than her sister. Was Felix lying after all, or how do you explain the difference? The small deviation we found is certainly no proof that whether you drink in the air or on the ground, that there are clearly different results. It's completely within the variation range. This machine does not lie and it says both have the same alcohol level and I am not the liar. What is true, however, many people feel drunker in the air. Why this is so has not yet been researched, but scientists have a theory there is less oxygen in the air at high altitudes. This leads to a slight lack of oxygen in the body, and this enhances the effect of the alcohol. That leaves Annika as the liar. She wants to blow up a washing machine with the pressure of evaporating dry ice, but let's be honest, that's just a lot of hot air. OK, the washing machine behind me is steaming quite nicely, but I admit, I was just leading you all on. I'm the liar. The reason? Dry ice builds up enormous pressure, but a washing machine is simply not airtight enough for the gas to blow it up. 